Hey, everybody! Do you know what time it is? That's right! It's time for day 47 of the 100 Days of Narration Challenge. Okay, so, yeah, day 47 of the 100 Days of Narration Challenge, and um, <clears throat> it just occurred to me that... Uh, Despite the fact that I said this was going to be like a video games reviews reek, I haven't really done, read out a lot of game reviews. Most of them have either been features, which is basically just explaining what the game's about, or previews, which, you know, just go on about weird things which may or may not be important to the final product, like um, that Final Fantasy VII preview, which was all about the minigames. And praising the mini games, like, oh my god, the mini games in this Final Fantasy VII is so awesome. It's like, really? That's the best. That's the best thing you could. That's the best thing you could take away from the preview of. Okay, you know, that's that's that. That's good. Good for you, buddy. Good, good, good for you. So today, I thought I might actually read a review this time, and uh, going to read a review from uh, PC Zone magazine. Most of the magazine uh, computer, the uh, gaming magazines I own are from PC because. Huge, huge PC gaming nerd um, back in the day. Still am, really, but uh, these days, not so much nerdish ner nerdish things. Uh, configuring a PC game is remarkably easier these days compared to, you know, days of, yeah, you have to create your own boot disks. You have to, like, uh, manage your own EMS and XMS memory. You have to memorize your DMA and IRQ for your sound card. I think it was mine was a... 220 and 5 and 1? I don't even remember what those were for. I, whatever. <clears throat> AW32 rocks. Anyway, um, yeah, so PC Zone Magazine, and uh, this was uh, issue number, oh my god. <laughs> no, sorry, I just looked down and, uh, you know how most PC magazines these days have like, um, like a, a, a DVD? Uh, extra, you know, like filled with like, I don't know, demos or patches or whatever. Do they wait? Do they still have do they still do? I don't even know if they still make game magazines these days. I should just really go to a news agent and look that up. For God's sakes, Edwin, you keep saying that, but you never do. Do it. Just go and see if they just do. Anyway, they used to have DVDs with all this stuff, random extras on it. OK. Well, before that, they had CDs, CD, CDs, because because back then uh, nobody thought, uh, hey, hey, because back then DVD ROMs were an esoteric, weird, mad thing, and uh, CD ROMs were it. Well, this particular magazine is so old that it had a demo disc, D I S K, a three and a half inch floppy, and it was uh, so. And what was this for? What year was this for? Oh, October, October 1994. So that's not too old, but still, it's it's a bit, it's a bit embarrassing, really. Uh, see that. And what was it for? What was the disc for? It was for a demo of Quarantine. You guys remember that Quarantine? Basically, you played a taxi driver in in a post-apocalyptic future, future cyborg city kind of thing, and you could either pick up people for taxi cab fare or run them over and uh, get money as well. Wow, that game probably wouldn't fly these days. Or would it? Wait, no, there was a Kickstarter, wasn't there, for something like this. Hellcab? I don't remember. Anyway, uh, going to read from this magazine. And I'm going to read from an actual review this time, because it's, uh, it's getting a little bit tiresome of me just going through features rather than actual opinions about a final version of the game and whatnot. So let's go through this in final review. I was already planning on reading a review, but first I have to find it. Oh, come on. Just give it to me. Just give me the goddamn review. I want your reviews. Give it to me, my love. Give it to me. Okay, here it is, finally. Okay, uh, going to read a review for Under a Killing Moon, which was... Um, uh, it was back in the days when uh, CD-ROM technology was first uh, exploited, and uh, nobody knew what to do with all that extra space, so people started doing, you know what, let's make interactive movies, because that's, that's where the future is. And they weren't too far wrong, but um, 
you know, it's more about digital actors rather than having actors like uh, look weird in front of a blue screen and try to feel natural in a very static environment. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's a glimpse at a past. It's one. Of, it was one of the best interactive movies at the time. That's not really... That's that's kind of a f- damn that like damned by faint praise, but uh, st- it was it was actually a fairly good game for the time. I think st- it still holds up. It holds up okay if you can get past the really really awkward like uh, control system. I mean, you use the mouse to move and you use the keyboard to control the camera. What, 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 what other game? What, what Can you name another game that does that? You can't, because that's a stupid idea. But at the time, uh, it was just, uh, people just didn't under, uh, just made up controls. You know what? It'll work. Somebody will figure things out. You know, like, uh, oh, let's use the function keys as part of the controls for, for the game. Yeah, that, that'll make that'll make great sense. No, it, no, it doesn't make great sense. But, um, Interesting times back in the PC era, back in those days, um, especially when you have a keyboard full of keys and you go, you know what, we'll just, we'll just map, you know, all the controls to these keys. That's one thing console games got right, you know, trying to map things into as few buttons as possible and trying to maximize the amount you can get out of those buttons. Of course, now controllers are about as confusing as keyboards because fucking hell. You guys, I mean, you guys who grew up with like the PS, um, PS3 cons, uh, controls and the Xbox controls and whatever, you know, you're used to it. But I, I just look in those at those things, go uh, at those things and go, that's too many buttons. That's that's like, like like four face buttons and how many triggers and bumpers? What? And then like, uh, oh oh look look the analog sticks also click to be their own buttons. That's that's uh, that's more, that's more buttons than I ever hope to have needed you know ever ever in anything <clears throat> anyway enough rambling let's have read of this actual thing this review under a killing moon uh, after i burp uh, okay okay there's another one going no there isn't okay under a killing moon Under a Killing Moon, has the interactive movie finally become reality? Do Hollywood stars look just as good in pixels? Warren Christmas. Wow, that's a name. Christmas. C-H-R-I-S-M-A-S. So like normal Christmas, only without the T. Has been interacting like crazy with the greatly anticipated new movie from Access and thinks he has the answers. It's hot, sticky, and the relentless drizzle outside doesn't look like it's ever gonna stop. The windows are shut and badly steamed, and the world outside seems a long, long way away. The boss leans back on his chair and draws heavily on his big, fat cigar. He'd normally blow, he'd normally blow circles, but he has other things on his mind, like the package on the desk in front of him. Ah, damn it, we've got to run with this thing. He said, he murmurs, but there are only three days to go till deadline, and it ain't ready. We can't, we can't do it, boss, I reply. The others shake their heads in agreement. Sure, but if we don't act fast, this thing's gonna be on the streets before we know what's hit us. We've got a duty to the public, let's roll with it. And so it came to pass that the next three days of this review's life would revolve around that package on the desk. Yep, Under a Killing Moon did indeed arrive just before our going to press deadline. Unfortunately, our review copy is not the final version. The game is finished, the graphics, sound, and music are there, and the gameplay is just about what you can ex- when you can ex- what <sighs> and the gameplay is just about what you can expect when the product ships. But with just a slight problem. Actually, a rather major one. But more on that later. US Gold is describing Under a Killing Moon as an interactive movie. But wait, don't turn that page just yet. This really is a game which comes close, if not matches, that description. You play long-time unemployed private... You play unemployed private... uh, Long-time unemployed private investigator... 
Text Murphy. A side of your personality you may remember. Sorry, let's try it again. A side of your personality you may well remember from previous releases, Mean Streets and Martian Memorandum. Memoran Memorandum? Memorandum. That's not a word you get a lot these days. You're a 50s-style American cop locked in the 21st locked in the 21st century. 2045, to be exact. An unpredictable scenario spoiled a little bit by the fact that the world, yawn yawn, has been devastated by has been devastated by a nuclear holocaust and is filled with normal humans and mutants. And is filled with normal humans and mutants. It wouldn't be fair to give too much of the plot away, as it would be like describing the storyline to a real movie before you've had a chance to see it. Suffice it to say, suffice it to say that as Tex Murphy. You're dragged back into action by the mysterious reappearance of Colonel Brian Keith. Uh, no, Brian Keith is the name of the actor. The name of the character is just the Colonel. Uh, you're dragged back into the action by the mysterious reappearance, uh, reappearance of the Colonel Brian Keith, the de the detective who was once your mentor. Thing is, he lost his license because of you. Was he doing back? The tasks and subtasks involved the tasks and subtasks involved become apparent as you go along. Solve a blur solve solve a burglary, find a remaining finding a missing statuette, free the captured free the captured girly, save the earth. All in a day's work. Well, six, actually. The game features a handful of semi-famous American stars who you may very well recognize, even if you can't actually put the names to faces. Apart from Brian Keith, there's Margaret Kidder. Russell... turn the page... Russell, 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 Russell... Uh... God, this article is confusing read. Um... Russell, Russell Means, oh sorry, Russell Means, Russell Means, plus the voice of James Earl Jones. Ring any bells? It seems strange that it, it seems strange that they've used actors from an older generation, although having said that, there are a few bimbo type characters included among the rest of the 25 strong cast to satisfy the twitching right hand of your average teenage male gamer player. Okay, that's uh, that's not sexist at all to say. Um, I guess you know, just just pointed out. Uh, your average teenage male games player. The lead role is taken by Chris Jones, vice president of Axis, the development team. Really, <laughs> you made this game just so you can be in it as an actor. Okay. Okay, why not, why not? He also co-designed and directed the game. A giant ego trip? Yeah, actually his acting and that of the rest of the cast is very good. Seeing real humans in computer games, however, it's a little old hat. And despite the fact that the video overlaying has been done very well, the only downside being that only one character moves at a time, the acted scenes aren't the most impressive part of Under the Killing Moon. The best feature is undoubtedly the main 3D environment, which is so special that it's difficult to draw comparisons with other games. It's certainly not like other interactive movies, Seventh Guest. Sorry. It's certainly not like the other interactive movies, Seventh Guest, where you wander along set paths in each room. With Under a Killing Moon, there's a cinematic mode which allows you to wander into every nuke and. Uh, nuke? With Under a Killing Moon, there's a. Uh, Damn it. I'm having a hard, hard time reading this. Uh, with Under a Killing Moon, there's a cinematic mode which allows you to wander into every nook and cranny of each of the 30 or so lo uh, sorry, 30 or so 3D locations using a mouse. Use the cursor keys as well as you can. Use the cursor keys as well, and you can look up and down, or zoom in and out peering into drawers, over ledges, up, up at ceilings, and so on. And all this created in real time. Yeah, that's what I was talking about in the first place. Yeah, use the mouse to move around, use the keyboard to <clears throat> control the camera. Who does that? No one does that, because everyone realized that's a stupid control method. But at the time, you know, no. Oh, wait, no, no, Quake came out. 
b- b- a couple of years later from here, so nobody understood. <clears throat> Use the mouse to control the camera. Use the keyboard to control the character. God. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um... Use the cursor keys as well, and you can look up or down and zoom in and out, peering to drawers, over ledges, up at ceilings, and so on. All this created in real time. The digitized characters are, pres- are present as you walk around, and they even appear animated, ab- albeit slightly. Stop to, talk- stop to talk to them, though, and you switch to foolish screen sequences. It all ties in very nicely. What's more, you can stop the movement when you want, then change to clue-seek mode when you, where you interact. No, really. Uh, God, this sentence is, stall- is too long. Uh, what's more, you can stop the environment. Stop the environment? No. What's more, you can stop the movement when you want, and then change to clue-seek mode where you can interact, no, really, with the environment by examining and picking up objects. Wow. Of course, in this sense, the game is more like a traditional adventure, as you spend a lot of time moving the cursor around a screen, examining anything that seems unusual. And just in... Oh, God, flip the page over. Oops, sorry, hit the mic there. My mistake. Sorry. It's all a little bit fuzzy on your end. Uh... Now, I've forgotten what the previous sentence was, so I go and go back, uh... Of course, in this sense, the game is more like a a traditional adventure, as you spend a lot of time moving the cursor around the screen, examining anything that seems unusual, and, just in case, anything which appears quite ordinary. Manipulating certain objects can trigger an entertaining cut sequence. Once found, you need to examine the collected items, combine them, offer them to characters, and generally do the same as you would do in any traditional two-dimensional graphic adventure. The real beauty is that when you go back to movement mode, the real beauty is that when you go back to movement mode, the 3D environment updates like you expect it to. Objects disappear when you've picked them up. Objects disappear when you've picked them up. For uh, oh, sorry. Objects disappear when you've picked them up. For example, I, I thought it was going like uh, pick them up. For example, but uh, it was more like a objects disappeared. Objects disappear when you've picked them up. For example, like that, rather than the other way around. 3D interaction. You bet your arse. You can tell this was made in Britain because of the arse. Can't believe that's actually considered a feature. If you pick up an object, it disappears from the environment. Yeah. The Then again, this was um the time when when uh C- CD ROMs was just around. Okay. As for the gameplay, well, the puzzles are standard fare. You'll need to use certain objects at certain locations at certain times, and displace objects to reveal secrets. Move the shield, and it reveals a switch. Move, Flick the switch, and it turns off the laser beam. You know, that sort of thing. Points are gained for getting things right. Hints are available, although using these will cost you mark. Although using these will cost you marks. Sound familiar? While the interactive movie tag may, to some, still seem a little over the top, there's no doubting that this game is a step forward, and at the very least, a groundbreaking 3D adventure. Once playing, it's very easy to take for granted things that simply weren't possible two or three years ago. Features like the spoken description of every object in every location, the movie-style soundtrack, and the digitized and the digita, digitized actors digitized actor ah, and the digitized actors blah that's awful of course nowadays we take for granted that uh, in adventure games if you guys ever play adventure games that um, <coughs> if a character examines an object then they'll be spoken out loud in fact full voiceover used to be a feature back then Heck, it used to be not a feature because because back then voiceovers. Why would you need voiceovers in a game? That's that's mad. That's just taking too much room on a disc, which could be used for, um, I don't know, uh, badly pixelated photos or something. Anyway, unfortunately, one side of the interaction that Access hasn't been able to improve upon is the actual conversations with the other characters. It's still the age-old, multiple-choice format, and sadly, if the conversation doesn't go the way you want it to, you need to simply start it over. 
This grinds after a while, especially as you're not shown what you're going to say, just the style, like humorous, threatening, or whatever. And the fact that some conversations are, sim are simply dead ends. Guesswork and perseverance are something you'll need to rely on. It's not surprising that Access claims there's 50 to 60, 50 to 60 hours worth of gameplay here. It's not surprising that Access claims there's 50 to 60 hours worth of gameplay in here. Really? Wow. For an adventure game, that's actually quite a lot. That's actually quite a lot these days in general as well. Unless it's like a, like an RPG where you're like um, spending most of the time grinding. Um, that's a lot for games in general these days. 50 to, 60, 50 to 60 hours. Wow. The minutes soon tick by trying to get the right information. But that's really a fairly minor criticism. And ignoring the fact that the plot, especially the jokes, are geared towards Americans, this is a first-class production. Uh, let's try that one, that sentence again. But that's really a minor criticism. And ignoring the fact that the plot, especially the jokes, are geared towards Americans, this is a first-class production. Oh, it's, it's it doesn't like it because it's American humor. Oh, you Americans and your gosh humor. <laughs> yes, well, uh, us English types, you know, we have a we have a more subtle uh, sense of humor, you know, like uh, fatty. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, fatty. That's uh, that's marvelous, marvelous. Yes, fatties, fatties, fatties. <laughs> yes, well. There we are. Fannies. They're hilarious. Anyway. Besides, you're going to have to get used to the latter with these mega-budget productions. He's not actually wrong there. He's not actually wrong there. I mean, there's a very... Um, used to be very Japan-centric uh, thing in AAA gaming, but nowadays it's more American-centric with... Uh, Stuff being made by well, let's face it, Activision and EA pretty much dominate the the uh, the um <clears throat> the leaderboard. Is that what you call? No, it's not called leaderboard. The the top ten best selling whatever you know, and um, yeah, it's it's very American these days. Everything's very American. Everything's very American. Big blockbuster action. Oh yeah, who are uh, realistic gaming? <laughs> Blood! Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> okay, and now uh, keep reading this review. So, why haven't we marked it? Well, basically, although we're not entirely happy with what we've got up to review, uh, by the time you read this, the game should be in the shops. We figured you'd want to know whether or not it was worth buying, especially as the asking price is not cheap. What we're not happy about is the fact that our review copy requires a massive 16 megabytes of RAM. <laughs> Whoa, 16 megabytes of RAM! Oh my god, my computer can't handle this! Oh no! Oh, <laughs> oh some things... God, some things are just... Uh, keep reading, keep reading. Whereas US Gold promised to release... Whereas US Gold prom promised the release product is only going to need four megabytes. <laughs> Something only needing four megabytes of RAM. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's that's crazy. That's that's madness oh god even a flash game requires more than that nowadays flash games fucking flash games require more oh <clears throat> oh okay i'm okay i'm okay sorry hit the micro microphone there all right <clears throat> i'm back now obviously this could have a significant effect on the performance as it stands, the machine is a little sluggish on the 16 megabyte 486 used for testing. Oh my god, 486. Uh, I went from a 386DX40 with like 4 megabytes of RAM. Yes, I had that kind of machine back in the day. To, um... <coughs> god. I didn't get a Pentium. I got something which was, um... Like a Pentium. But in reality was like, uh... In, in, in the same way that, um, 
what's a good comparison? What's a good comparison? Uh, it's like it's like uh, if you oh here we go. It's like if you ask for a Coke and someone gave you Pepsi, you would hit that person in the face because it's not the fucking same thing. Coke is not Pepsi. Pepsi is not Coke. You can't mix the two together. Unless, unless you do, in, in which case, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just one of those crazy people who just, you know, if I ask for a Coke, I want a Coke. If I ask for Pepsi, I want a Pepsi. I, you can't, you can't mix the two. That's that, that, not right. No. 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 Sorry, getting sidetracked here. <clears throat> As it stands, the game is a little sluggish on the 16 megabyte 486 used for testing. A new location takes around 20 seconds to load, and the moving around in 3D mode is a one-way ticket to Flickertown Central. A warning was given on installation that the video card was too slow, but is an Orchid Fahrenheit, so what's it going to be like on a Trident? I don't think those video cards exist anymore, or those video card companies. Orchid Fahrenheit? Trident? I think Tridents are still around. Don't Trident doesn't Trident make washing machines? Are they trying to install the game on a washing machine? I don't I, I don't know. <clears throat> Admittedly, there's an option to change the size of the viewing window. Admittedly, there's an option to change the viewing vi window in a game, but if you need a Pentium and a supercharged DOS graphics accelerator to get the maximum picture size and a decent frame rate, I'll be disappointed. Tune in next month for an update and a, ra and a rating based on the final product. Those of you with a Ninja PC should get down to the shops immediately. And the final score is a question mark because of what the problems they described there. Pigs can fly. Interactive movies do exist. Sort of. And what do we got here? Oh, the price is for £59.95. Is that typical these days? I, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, <clears throat> and uh, specs, minimum memory to be announced, minimum processor, 386.25. Oh, dear Lord. That's, wow. I'd be impressed. And, uh, or a 486.33. Uh, uh, 25 being the, 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 the hertz, megahertz. God, you got, I don't know. We don't even do that these days anymore. Uh, the whole gigahertz, megahertz thing. It, it used to be like a big deal. Like, oh my God, my processor rather something, something mega gigahertz. But um, these days doesn't really matter with like a dual quad or octi core, octo core. Is it octo core? I don't know anymore. I don't know the, how things work these days. Hard disk space required. One megabyte. <laughs> One megabyte. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. One megabyte. Most Flash games are bigger than that. That's crazy. Most freeware games are bigger than that. Uh, most adventure games being developed in the AGS engine are bigger than that. Ah. Graphics mode supported VGA and SVGA. Wow, that takes me back. It doesn't even give resolution, just, you know, the number of colors. Uh, sound card supported most, but not yet finalized. Yeah, and that was a problem back then as well. Like, uh, most people these days just use the onboard card, which is, you know, fine. Um, and, and controls keyboard with mouse. Well, that's just great. Oh, and this little sidebar note here. How many? Thanks to over three and a half hours of video footage, Under a Killing Moon comes to four CDs. Ooh, that's quite impressive. Comes on four CDs. Yes, you read that right. Four CDs. Thankfully, Access has been clever enough to duplicate important stuff, like the graphics data for your office, across all of the disks, therefore minimizing the number of times you need to swap them. Sorry, therefore minimizing the number of times you have to swap them over. Yeah, that was another thing back then, wasn't it? You had to swap disks in between levels or whatever for certain games. Some games, um, <clears throat> sorry. Some games that wasn't a problem, uh, some game, uh, but, um, yeah, God, I remember how it was back then, having to keep swapping discs for certain games, that was harsh. 
Ugh. And most people didn't have big enough hard drives to like uh, copy all the CD uh, and from information onto the hard drives too. So, whereas nowadays, nowadays people just um, install the full game onto their hard drive and then just toss the, the the DVD away, which is kind of you know what happens now. Okay, uh, those with more than one CD-ROM drive or a multi-disc set or a multi-disc unit rather can tailor the setup accordingly. In fact, when you install the game, you'll find yourself in Options City. Oh, that's nice. That's a that's a that's very prescient of them, actually. Very nice of them to do that. Anyway, wow, uh, talk too long. Uh, that was the review. Well, sort of a re- review. There wasn't really a final score, but it was a, it was a fairly positive thing overall. Uh, for Under a Killing Moon from PC Zone Magazine. Uh, issue number, issue number 19. Sorry, I didn't mention this before. Issue number 19 for October 1994. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that reading. Uh, tomorrow come back for, uh, day 48. Day 48. Day 48 of the 100 Days of Narration Challenge. Thank you for joining me.